Good morning, everybody. I'm recording this from my office in London, and I'm afraid that given the relatively short notice of this terrific honor, I was unable to move my calendar around and be with you in Cape Town. I'm really sorry about that, and I wish I was there right now. Now, Westerford has extraordinary memories for me, and whilst the school has transformed since I matriculated, I think that the fundamentals have re remained very much the same. Westerford was also a place of the most hilarious experiences. I was explaining to my two sons the other day that in Standard 7, I took art. They were shocked because they couldn't understand how that was even possible, given that I have no abilities at all for art. So I told them that the actual reason was that I was very keen to be in class with a girl over whom I developed a massive crush. The only overlap in our schedules was art. I didn't know what it's like now. But our teachers were very direct with us. And after a few lessons, my art teacher looked at me very sympathetically and said, so sweetly, she said, Bradley, you are very useless at the subject and you have no talent at all. Don't you want to try woodwork? I said, no, miss, I have a passion. I certainly did have a passion, but it definitely was not for art. And so I stayed in that class. I failed art miserably, and I got absolutely nowhere on the other front either. But I suspect I learned some kind of a life lesson from the whole experience, although I still have no idea what that lesson was, and I suspect I'd do it all over again. In my matric year in 1983, I contracted a ravaging tuberculosis. It was quite touch and go, actually, and my parents contacted Dr. John Gibbon, the then headmaster, after the Hrutuskir doctor suggested that it was not at all certain that I would make it through the days to come. Dr. Gibbon visited me immediately in the hospital, and he mobilized the school to pray for my return to good health. When I recovered and regained some strength, Dr. Gibbon wrote to me. He sent me a letter that has never left my side. He explained very beautifully and impactfully that I'd been given another chance at life, and that from then on, I should consider very seriously how to offer the best of myself in the service of others. That was the framework that he set out for me. And some 40 years later, this is still my greatest challenge, and it is most certainly a work in progress. Dr. Gibbon's letter and his constant reminder to try my best lives in my heart. Some days I succeed, and often candidly, more often than not, I really failed quite spectacularly, but I shall keep trying. Never mind me, though. It is you who are important just now. And if this award is to mean anything seriously useful, it is that for each of you, it might be a moment to reflect on what it will mean for you to give of your best. For all you Westerford students must be wondering why some guy from the distant past is addressing you. But given that I am, I have a thought I'd like to share with you all. You see, I come from much the same place as each of you. My parents were the children of immigrants to South Africa who dedicated their lives to educate their children. And I have no doubt that each of you has or will face life's battles. You will need great reserves of tenacity and perseverance to achieve whatever your goals may be in this world. Have no doubt of that. But the starting point always is a values and belief system. And Westerford stands for something. It understands institution building. Westerford has always and continues to build deep foundations based on a belief system. And this school has embedded in its DNA what it means to have a community of people who care for one another and feel collectively responsible and accountable for the lives and outcomes of each individual in the Westerford community. My five years at Westerford taught me to have conviction and to lead. And to all of you, I say, find the space in which you can show leadership in your homes and your classrooms and your communities and one day in your work lives and most importantly across society. As you see when you look around you and consider the state of the world, we are desperately short of values-driven leaders. Desperately so. The situation globally is quite dire on that front. But if you think even for one moment that this is beyond your help and that you cannot change that, you are very, very wrong. You can. And I tell you today that it is not just a possibility for you, but it is your responsibility to do just that. Because with the privilege of a distinctive education, and that is what you are getting, 
come to the obligation to serve. That you come from the southern tip of Africa is a great advantage. You have seen life for all its joys and pain, and you live in a very unique society with a very tough but ultimately inspirational history. Don't waste your opportunity to lead. That, given your background and education, would be a great loss. So thank you again, Headmaster. Thank you, Mark, for your kindness in giving me this award, which I dedicate in turn to the students and the endless possibilities offered them, in the same way that I dedicated my knighthood to Dr. Gibbon, who had introduced me all those years ago to public service. You can have no idea how grateful I am for all that the school has given me. I look forward to visiting in November. It is my class of 1983, 40th year matric reunion. It is hard to believe given that I'm only 34, but I shall be there and I shall have to deal with this. But thank you to all of you and I wish you ongoing strength. I look forward to meeting many of you when I'm at the school in November. Thank you and have a great Founders Day.